So first up is Will Fung. All four candidates will have five minutes to speak, followed by three questions from the floor. Here's Will Fung. Hi, I'm Will Fung. I'm a second year lawyer at Magdalen, and I'd really appreciate your vote tomorrow for president. I want to make your Easter term at the union diverse, accessible, and distracting. Diverse by getting members to pick the motions that you're going to see. Accessible by streaming debates online and laying the groundwork for lower membership fees, both for my term and my successors. And distracting by giving you the most awesome lineup of speakers and ents, so you don't have to think about exams. A bit about who I am. When I got here, I had no intention of organising the speakers or public debate side of the union, but I did want to learn how to debate. I then went into organising competitions for the union as a natural step, including the UK's largest ever competition for under 16s. I've been leading Cambridge debating as debating officer for the past two terms, during which I've run regular workshops for over 100 members. I managed a budget of over 40,000 pounds. I've engaged more debaters than ever in our social events program. I've been working with college admissions departments to target our access scheme to the children we'll have the biggest impact on in their higher education choices. Through that role, I've been at the centre of the union's administrative system as a voting member of standing committee, and I've been at every single one of its meetings this term in order to plan its diverse range of events. It's a pretty minor change, but I also got the no drinks in the library rule revoked last term because, put simply, it's what members wanted. It was through this that I fell into volunteering as a steward and working on the system we use to invite speakers. I guess my point is this: members often fall into helping out at the union because they chance upon how fun it, how, how fun it is. The ordinary member doesn't have his entire union career plotted out before he gets here, and the way we're going to engage as many members as possible is by opening up the ways they're able to help. The open door policy of speakers, debates, and presidential committees, which I want to work with, are perfect for getting people to help in the way they want to, and they make the union seem less intimidating. So, what would I do as president? And like Voldemort's soul, I've split my speech into seven parts. <laughs> One, better debates. My main proposal is members' votes on motions, and that's right in my manifesto. It's really simple. You nominate some topics, we make a short list, you all vote, and then you've chosen some of the debates you'll be seeing. Why is this good? Because you only get to elect officers two terms before we make the motions, and you don't elect us because of the motions that we're going to run. You don't even know what motions we're going to run. That's not giving you choice. My proposal will. We'll also make more engaging debates. Six individual speakers making separate speeches that they wrote a week ago aren't fun. Debates where each speaker discusses what's come before and what they're engaging with—that is fun. I'll brief speakers and look at encouraging points of information, which tend to be the most engaging parts of the debate. Two, officers in the bar. Thursday nights are the centerpiece of the union's week, so it seems odd that officers sometimes go into the office to have cliquey chats rather than into the bar to hear your feedback when it's fresh off the presses. I'll change that. I'll implement a rotor system so while all officers are either in the dining room entertaining our guests, it is something that ha has to happen, or in the bar, they'll never be in a locked office. Three, online access. I've already been part of the plans to throw open our speaker events and debates to both alumni and those who might casually listen to a debate whilst doing their essays, but can't commit an entire evening to come down to the union to see the events. Life membership should be for life, not just when you're in this building. Four, I'll lower membership costs. I'll work with the treasurer to find sponsorship as soon as I was elected, and as pretty much all of us have said, and like I'll continue to lobby colleges to implement a system of payment by instalments. Five, awesome speakers. I wouldn't shy away from inviting controversial or celebrity speakers alongside more intellectual speakers from academic disciplines. Your Easter time is scarce, so I'll make sure that if we're inviting you to an event, it's worth your time. Six, awesome ents. The union's at its best when it's either the whole place turning into something completely different, or it's a springboard for a great night out. An example of the former is denim at the union. An example of the latter is if I worked with the social ents officer and companies like Big Fish Ents and Kusu Spectrum to get members reduced price tickets. That has the added advantage of publicising our fantastic bar. And onto that, number seven, advertising our best features. Most members don't know about the amazing discounts they get at the bar or the insanely low prices for booking out rooms for personal use. Or a quiet library, our world-class debating workshops, our snooker tables. The rules on reciprocal membership at other unions have also been long needing clarification, not just the past term. And the term card page advertising these facilities needs a visual design overhaul. So a vote for me is a vote for your choice on motions and more and more engaging debates. It's a vote for officers who listen to your concerns. 
It's a vote for online access, a vote for lower membership costs, for awesome speakers and awesome ends, and a union which has given you the best facilities for your money. Vote Thong. I'm more than just a pretty name. Thank you. We'll now take three questions from the floor. If you can wait until I point to you and wait for a microphone, please. Hi. Um, every single election cycle, the candidates say that they don't like the clique and they're going to talk to everybody. Um, obviously, I have no idea like whether or not you'll carry it out. I could easily say they never do, so why would you? But my question actually is um, sometimes like they need to be in that clique to organize stuff. Um, and I don't know, but I would suspect that lots of the members don't mind that they're running around when they're actually organizing stuff. Um, I actually prefer like formal feedback systems rather than being like, chat to me, because then... They say email me, you do, they don't reply, or they forget who you are. Thanks. Um, pretty much three questions there. Um, so, like, the first one was about, like, formal versus informal methods of communication. Um, well, basically, the current feedback system, there is a form, but very few members know about it. It's very generalized, and it's also buried away on the CUS website, so you can't access it. I think both of those methods can exist. You can have formal and informal methods. You can talk to someone, you can send them an email, or you can, like, um, you know, write it on a feedback form and hand it in manually. That, all, that, all, that stuff all works, and I'll just try and make sure that as many options exist for feedback as is possible. Um, in terms of the clique and how you need cliques to run the union, yeah, sure, I accept that. Um, I don't think that's, you know, I, I think some people work better in teams, some people work better as individuals. Um, I, I, I didn't say anything against cliques specifically. What I did say something against was people running into the office as soon as the debate's over. I don't think people should be spending all their time in the office, or indeed any time in the office. There's nothing in there to be done after a debate. You should be either entertaining speakers or engaging with members, and that's why I'd make sure that happens. Do you have another question, please? Um, how important do you think access is at the union? And what does it do exactly? Yeah, so I think probably the main outlet for access at the union is debating workshops. So what I've done as debating officer is run access workshops at the union. I've worked with... Uh, p Towers admissions, other college admissions programs when, when they bring students in. So those are the students specifically who we need to target the most because they're the ones who might be thinking about coming to Cambridge. They're the ones who might be thinking about university or higher education. The main thing, to that, uh, main thing there is demystification. We want to make it so people can see we're just you know, ordinary students, we're ordinary people just like them. And that's really important. So debating is a huge part of that. I think access is important, first, because it's just a good thing to do. It's important to get people in. And second, because it's part of our charitable status. And we do need that to, to, to keep run, uh, running. And do we have one final question? Um, so female representation in competitive debating is actually quite low. Um, as debating officer, what have you been doing to try and counteract that? Yeah, so um, what we did, we... I mean, the first thing that we did was that we tried to make a system more where we have more social ends throughout debating. So we ran a social at the beginning of term and invited everyone to it, tried to make sure that uh, individuals who had been at debating before didn't sit together, because often that can be quite alienating. We've also tried to send more all-female teams to inter-varsity competitions. The limiting factor there is simply people wanting to apply. So the way to solve that problem is then what we've done is um, trying to make sure that it's a really non-competitive situation. So people understand that actually in reality debating isn't about always winning and always you know, necessarily doing really, really well and we won't invite you to competitions if you don't. It's about making it very clear that anyone can get involved and that anyone can compete at any standard for us and we're really happy to have them there. I think that's probably the main differentiating factor on a cultural <coughs> level between um, girls and boys and that's just something we've observed empirically and it's something we're really working to change. So those are the things that we've done. Thank you. Our next candidate is Michael Dungosian. Good evening. I hope you're all having fun. Um, some would describe this as the most boring event in the union's term card. Um, others would describe this as the most boring event in the union's term card. 
Um, but I suppose it is important that you hear what it is that I have to offer you, and, and so here goes. Um, in a nutshell, the reason you should vote for me is because I know what it's like to plan a term here. And as such, I'm the candidate you can rely on to deliver you the best Easter 2014. So what is my experience here at the Union? So I've been involved more or less since I first arrived at Cambridge. For the last term, I've been treasurer. I was involved in setting the annual budget, in securing corporate sponsorship, and in planning Michaelmas this term. So that is picking debate topics and inviting speakers and making preparations for the term card. And I spent about four weeks of my summer here doing just that. It was great fun. Um, before that, I was on supplementary committee in Lent 2013. So I sent out speaker invites. I stewarded debates. I was involved in helping out in a variety of different ways. I'm also a competitive debater. I'm going to the World Championships in Chennai in India to represent the union this, this winter. Um, and I've also been involved in running access workshops up and down the country um, to help people from disadvantaged backgrounds get into debating. And I think that's a very important thing that we should push forward. And I want generally people to know about the opportunities we have in Cambridge debating so that as many people can enjoy them. I think they really can add value. So what are my aims as president? First, I want to deliver you a fantastic Easter 2014. What do I mean by that? Well, first off, debates. I want debates that cater to your interests, which is why I'm going to run a survey over the course of Lent to determine that. I'm going to do that over the course of many weeks so that everyone has an opportunity to respond. Secondly, I'm going to vary the debate format. A lot of people complain that our debates are too long. A lot of people claim that they're not responsive enough. So I want to mix up the format. Look at what people like Intelligence Squared do. Try and vary it a little bit. See what works. Second off, speaker events. I want to work very hard to get the big names that you want to see. But I also recognize the fact that our members have a diverse range of interests and that there's not one size fits all. As such, I want to hold niche speaker events in the library so that everyone can get something they enjoy. Um, and I also want to increase the diversity of our speakers so we get a variety of different perspectives on show. Finally, our ENTS, our bar, and our facilities. I want more people to know about them, and I want your, your input. I want to learn what it is that you guys want in, from our ENTS. I want to learn what it is you guys want from our bar and work to do that, because frankly, I'll be honest with you, I don't know. Um, Second off, I want to work to create an open union. What do I mean by that? Three things. First off, payment by instalments. It's quite simply an imperative. I've been looking into this as treasurer with Amy's help, and now I want to push this forward as president. This is something that I will get done. Right? Secondly, I want to look at feedback mechanisms. First off, I want to run a big survey documenting members' interests so that we can know what sort of debate areas you're interested in, how, our inter how your interests break down. But secondly, what I want to do is I want to keep the officers available after events. I don't want them cooped up in the dining room or indeed, as Will has it, in the office. Um, but moreover, I don't want the speakers cooped up in there either. They've come to address you, so it's only natural that they should talk to you afterwards. And what we found is that many of them enjoy it. Um, it's just that they get shepherded away into the dining room. So I think that's something that we definitely should train, particularly given the fact that you're paying for the whole thing. Finally, I want to enhance diversity. The div diversity figures for our speaker invites are so poor that we don't actually record them. That's something we need to change. I will work with the women's officers and the diversity officer to make that change. Um, secondly, I want to enhance diversity within debating. This has already been alluded to. I want to work with the women's officer and the debating officer to explore new avenues of inquiry to make this better, because many other debating societies do a much better job than we do. Finally, I don't want the ramifications of my presidency to end when I move out of office. First thing I want to do is work on long-term partnerships. I'm talking about Intelligence Squared, TED, the Oxford Media Company, airline movies, local TV shows. Oxford has done deals with airline movies and with the Oxford Media Company, somewhat obviously. I think we should pursue similar partnerships so that we provide a better platform. Not only so that more people, including life members who've left Cambridge, can enjoy our events, but also so that they provide a better platform, which means speakers will be more willing to come, more willing to use that. And secondly, I want to work on continuity. Every term, there's a change of team, and with that, a lot of information is lost and a lot of relationships with important people like sponsors and agents are lost. I want to preserve that. I want to work to create a proper database of all the accumulated knowledge so that we can be more effective. You might ask then, what is my vision for the union? And my response is, I don't have one. I think 70% of undergraduates are currently members of this institution. And as such, there's a huge diversity in terms of the interests of our members and huge diversity in terms of what people want out of it. Some people want to have a union career. Other people just want to come along to debates. So we need to cater to all those people. So I don't have one vision. I want to make sure that there's something for everyone. And if you vote for me, that's what you'll get. Thank you very much.
Any questions? Michael, over here. <laughs> yes. Um, Go, Steve Mark. So it's one thing to make the union run really well and everything, but at some point you'll be sitting up. If you win, you'll be sitting on a big chair. And so I'm just wanting to see how you'll deal with the situation. Let's say somebody stands up with this floor speech that's very good for the first 30 seconds of declining value for the next 30 seconds, and for the next two minutes, they're ignoring all signs that everyone has done with them. And you're the one sitting up in the chair, and people are starting to look at you awkwardly. Okay, go, what would you do? Okay, Mark, the first thing is if I'm sitting in a big chair, I'm not entirely sure my feet touch the ground. <laughs> right, somewhat less facetiously. I teach school kids to debate. I'm very good at telling people to shut up. <laughs> I won't hold back on that. You know, if someone stands up and, and keeps on talking, I'll just tell them to shut up. And if they don't, then Nick Wright knows what to do. Do you have any more points on the floor? Um, I'm just interested in hearing more about the specific programs you had in mind in terms of working with women's officers to get more women in debating and also do you think it's a problem that so for example for the lineup tonight there's not one female speaker on the bill would you work in improving that kind of thing yes um, so I'll deal with the second of those first then I'll move back on to, on to debating which is something I care a great deal about um, so the first thing is um, in terms of speaker invites part of the role of women's officer is to suggest female speakers Part of the role of diversity officer is to ensure that we are inviting a diverse range of speakers from a diverse range of backgrounds who can bring a variety of perspectives. Two things can go wrong here. Either they don't do it, or people don't listen. And the slight nuance on that last one is people don't think to listen, or people don't even ask. Those are all things that I want to change. There's not some concrete program here, but the ethic that I want to instill in my team is every debate you make an effort. You don't just invite another white upper middle class backbench MP. You try and be imaginative. Not only does that lead to better representation, which is important in terms of creating a welcoming union as Fawn Shop wants, but also it leads to a greater variety in the debate, which at the end of the day makes a better debate to watch. So I think it's very much a cultural thing. In terms of increasing diversity and competitive debate, and the first thing is I don't claim to know everything, but I think we should do more than just rearrange the chairs at socials. Um, what I'm really interested in doing, and I think this is very important, is getting more pro as well, so that debates who have less experience get training from debaters who have more. That's something that we haven't done enough of this year because we haven't incentivized it enough. I want to do more of that. Do you have one final question for Michael? Um, you said you'd like to reach out to the life members. Well, it's right for me, I'm here. Um, this has been a perennial problem in the union for several years now. It would like to reach out to its life members, but it doesn't seem to be able to find out who they are. How are you actually going to contact the life members? Cambridge is full of life members. I was here for 17 years and I never set foot in the union until I retired. So what are you going to do to have caught me while I was working? Yeah. So first thing is, Richard, I'd really like to give you a hug. And that, that definitely would be making contact of a sort. Um, but, but somewhat less facetiously again. Um, obviously, this is one of the big themes of the 2015 campaign. So we've got someone working on this at the moment on a means of reaching out to our alumni. And that involves contacting various alumni who we have records of, starting with people in the standing committee and working our way out, building up that network, getting people coming in for events, and timing that with our 200th anniversary so we can generate that momentum. We've got a whole program of speakers who we're inviting at the moment to come and, and do a series of events that alumni can come to. We're thinking of setting up live streams so that they can watch those events. Basically, I think it's about generating momentum. It's about generating momentum so you can pierce into those networks and get those people coming back. Data protection means we can't just go and look up their names. But that's as so far as I know. But that's fine. I think there are other ways of doing this, and we're currently working on those, and I want to drive those plans forward like absolutely anyone else. I've sat on the 2015 committee. I've been to those meetings, um, and I want to drive that forward. Um, for more consultation, I believe Alex Forzani wrote a 20-page briefing memo on it. Um, I'm more than happy to go through that with you. Um, but there's a lot going on here, and I want to push it forward. Thank you. Our next candidate is Sarah Aslam. Thank you, and thank you very much for coming here today. My name is Sarah, and I would really appreciate your vote today. 
because voting for me means that you are voting for a fantastic Easter 2014. Central to this is the fact that this is not just a CV ticking exercise for me. Rather, I'm, t I'm completely determined to make a tangible difference through members' collaboration, union inclusivity, revenue generation, and value for money. So first of all, members' collaboration. First and foremost, I do not want to impose my agenda on members. I want members' views to shape the direction that this union takes. I would actively engage with members to get on board thoughts and implement those through collaboration. So how do I propose on doing this? An online forum where people can actually exchange ideas and suggestions. A weekly forum here in the union, which means that people can actually discuss concerns with committee members. And more importantly, following up these discussions with votes and implementation through debate topics, speakers, entertainment, fitness and professional networks. Secondly, union inclusivity. Both before and during my campaign, I have spoken to many people who feel that the union is too elitist and attracts only a certain group of people. I want to get rid of such notions. Why would I, what would I do to increase diversity and accessibility? I would create graduate representatives who would actually target the graduate community over here. This would not only benefit graduates who actually want to take part in this union, this would actually encourage undergrads to seek help and subject guidance as well. I would also push for an alumni network. So this would mean that you have lifetime benefits for lifetime members. And this is something that is very necessary. It would also mean that students actually benefit from job coaching, from internships, and from more opportunities to secure funding. And obviously drive down membership costs through this. My neutrality means that I would not go around branding people as extremists and thus isolating people and both current and potential members. Instead, I would ensure that members collaborate in inviting speakers that they want to hear. Third, revenue generation. In order to attract more people to this union, it is essential to address the biggest hurdle here, which is the price. So what is my proposal? Make use of members' cards essential in accessing this building during all hours. This would mean that non-members and tourists would have to pay to see this beautifully historic building. And of course, the, also the debates on offer. Having a systematic way of reaching out to corporate sponsors through pitches, through professional and personal um, networks, and through the uh, alumni network previously mentioned, which would not only create a pool of like-minded individuals, but would also potentially provide very good links to sponsorship generation. Fourth, value for money. Yes. Whilst I agree that the Cambridge Union Society was founded as a debating society, and yes, many members do want improvements in this sphere, which I would totally support. The reality is that many members also look at this society as an opportunity to engage with high-profile speakers, to meet new people, and to enjoy a truly Cambridge society. Thus, we need to give members a reason to part with almost £200 for lifetime membership. So how would I do this? Debates, giving members spots on, in the main debates and ensuring more, times for, uh, more time for questioning speakers and giving members opportunities to have photos with speakers and to engage with them at the end. Second, a wider range of entertainment, liaising with members to see what they want and perhaps having more social events uh, amongst student members and also separate ones with alumni uh, members to help make links with life beyond Cambridge. Third, fitness classes. More of them and more spread out over a number of days so that, days, uh, so that the days um, that are filled up, there are actually more opportunities to engage in them and alternative options. Fourth, competitions. Holding regular competitions within the union which would actually benefit members, perhaps by using the alumni network to secure um, internships and perhaps cash prizes for education, etc. So, in summary, if you vote for me, you are voting for an amazing 2014 Easter term, which puts you at the core of the union activities through, uh, through membership collaboration, union inclusivity, revenue generation, and value for money. Thank you. We'll now take three questions from the floor. Um, so you've spoken quite a lot about lots of ways that members sort of don't get what they want or like can't get involved and blah 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 and you've 
touched on quite a few separate solutions to those problems. I'm just wondering, have you ever, as a member, sort of tried to get involved in any way and found a problem, or have you ever like found that you've wanted to do something and there was a way that you couldn't do it? What, what's like the background to, to all those ideas? Um, the background is that I've been speaking to a number of members, and this is what they've been saying to me whilst I was campaigning and uh, whilst I was just speaking to them to get ideas about what uh, improvements they would like to see. So it's more through, um, uh, through feedback I've received. Any other questions? Yeah. Sorry. Um, okay, I think a lot of your speech sounded very ambitious, especially with building a huge alumni network and getting them involved and getting corporate sponsorship all around that. Um, what's your kind of experience of that and, and why are you so optimistic? <laughs> why am I optimistic? Okay. Um, well, prior to this, I was working at PwC for two years um, as a management consultant. Um, so yes, I, I, I want to be ambitious because I believe that there's a lot that this union can do. Um, I, I have done pitches before because I used to be president of an international organization and I believe that uh, sponsorship is not easy to get, but it is definitely possible if you are making the right sort of effort. So yes, in that sense, I am optimistic, but I definitely see it happening as well because I've got previous experience in that. And you have one final question. Hi, it's, on, it's on quite a specific point, but um, you're talking about access, and yet I, I can't see how you'd think it'd be a good idea to like uh, close up the whole building to people who aren't already members of the union. I mean, I'm not a very regular member, and half the time I come in here, it's just to go to the bar with friends who aren't members, and uh, it seems like sort of quite an well, it's quite an one of the main reasons I go in here, so I mean, it, it seems like a bizarre thing to do. That was it, really. Uh, the first thing I did say was that um, I would definitely collaborate with members to um, think about what they would actually want to see. So whilst it is an idea, it would obviously go through you guys. Um, but I do think that it's very important to generate revenue as well. Um, so whilst it would give access to perhaps school children and things like that, um, I think tourists in particular, you can probably benefit from them. Thank you. And finally, our final candidate for president, Elon Aslan Levy. Thank you. I can only apologize to everyone who's been here since the supplementary committee uh, hustings an age ago. So I hope sort of please don't nod off. If you can bear with me for a couple of minutes, I really will try to make it worth your time. My name is Elon Aslan Levy. I'm uh, an international relations MPhil student. And I'm running for president because I believe that the union has forgotten what it's all about as a debating society. And I want to work to put debating and specifically members' participation back at the center of what this union does. So I'm not going to stand up here and give you a speech about how I'm going to invite great speakers and raise sponsorship. Of course I'll do that. That's in the job description. I'm also not going to stand up here and tell you that I'm going to do more of the same but better as a lot of the other candidates have promised to do, and we definitely should be doing. Instead, I'm running on a very specific list of policies. If you like the sound of my policies, vote for me. If you think you might be able to be persuaded, then find me in the bar after the debate and we'll talk about it and hopefully I can persuade you. If perhaps you think you have ways to improve these ideas, talk to me as well and we'll work on improving them. But if you think that what I'm proposing is absolutely not the direction in which you want to see the union going, then perhaps I'm not your candidate. So I have four policies. The first one is this. I want to make the emergency debates about major current issues. That's in the Constitution. It's something we should already be doing. Under the status quo, you come here to hear a joke debate. It's a joke motion. The motion is something about zombies or independence for Cambridge, and it can be pretty fun, but let's face it, a lot of the time it's just mediocre stand-up. I did one of these debates, and the fact that a lot of people came up to me afterwards and said that that was one of the best speeches they'd seen tells me a lot about how people feel about these emergency debates. Because members don't have an opportunity to get involved. They may, maybe get to make a couple of speeches, but they don't really get a chance to engage with these major issues. That's what I want to do. We're going to pick topics that are at the top of the news agenda. Something that could be on Newsnight or Question Time that evening. 
We'll put it for a poll on Facebook to let people choose which motions they want to do the emergency debate on. Intervention in Syria, attacking Iran, Scotland, Doctor Who, whatever. And then we open it straight to the floor. Two-minute speeches. Does anyone want to speak in proposition? Does anyone want to speak in opposition? I want to give you a chance to speak about the major events that are going on in the world today. Because that's what we are. We're a debating society. Together, collectively, we have a huge amount of knowledge that we can share with each other. If only we use this amazing sort of replica House of Commons in order to share that knowledge with each other. The second thing I want to do is I want to introduce student speakers into the main debates. One on each side. Now, I know that many people haven't been too impressed with the quality of the student speakers in the debates. That's not their fault. It's our fault. Because we only tell them the night before or that morning once our guest speakers have dropped out. That's not good enough. We have some of the best debaters in the world at Cambridge. European and international champions. I want to hear what they have to say. It's going to be much more exciting to watch. But even if you're not an international competitive debating champion, many of you will have experience and expertise in other issues. Tonight's debate is about immigration. If you wrote your thesis about immigration and you're a competent speaker, I want to hear you debate here in the chamber. We, everyone here, are the opinion leaders of tomorrow. And I think it's much more important to hear what you and everyone here has to say about the major issue than the retired B-list celebrities we sometimes have to resort to in order to make sure that the debate is full. But thirdly, I also want to organize one-on-one -on -one debates with controversial speakers. You'll have noticed we don't have any controversial speakers on the term card. We don't have them this term, we don't have them next term. And the reason is, it's just too much of a hassle to organize them. We have to pay a huge amount in security costs in order to blockade the building, and then members don't have a chance to challenge them properly. We put them on a soapbox, we give them a chance, yep, we give them, we give them a chance to make uh, a speech, and members can't challenge them properly. So I'll do one-on-one -on -one debates with these controversial speakers. Last, well, earlier in the year, I accepted, a debate to, I accepted an invitation to do a one-on-one -on -one debate against George Galloway at my previous university. Some people might have heard about that because what followed when he stormed out on me uh, made the news. But that's a different topic. One-on-one -on -one debates. We then get a chance to challenge them properly. We really get free speech, and we meet that free speech with challenges to that free speech. So we can come away and say, I've heard this person speaking, but now I've heard it from the horse's mouth, and I know what it's all about. That's what the Cambridge Union should be about. Free debate and the free exchange of ideas from ordinary members. But on top of that, I also want to have a completely new look at how we're going to raise money. I want to have a look at raising revenue by opening the union building to tourism during the vacation. If I'm elected president, I'll be working in that office over there throughout the whole of Easter. And for most of it, this building will be standing completely idle. That's a huge waste. This is a historic resource, and we have tourists who walk past every single day without looking at it. I want to negotiate with local tour guides so that we can bring people into this chamber, part of this, uh, this part of British cultural, and, his, uh, cultural um, and historical heritage, so we can raise additional money for the union. So that's what I'm about. I'm about putting member participation center stage. If you like my ideas, please vote for me. Thank you very much. Are there any questions? Um, I just wanted to raise a question with regards to your second point about getting more um, members speaking in the main debates. That was actually something implemented by the executive elect this term. It is currently possible to, for all students or members to um, even to apply to speak in main debates. Do you think you've got anything to <laughs> anything to add to that? <laughs> yes, because what we will do is we will well, sort of if elected. I would invite these people to debate in the main debates at the same time that we go about inviting all the other guest speakers. That would be my first priority. We have two speakers, one on each side, to open the debate, to set structure. If it's their area of expertise, I want them getting involved right from the start, not from inviting them only when the guest speakers drop out at the last minute. We have so much talent here, it's really wasteful not to use it. Hi. Uh, this is about largely your point on controversial speakers. And I wondered if you could comment on what I see as the main reason that we don't invite controversial speakers. One is that it costs about £10,000 uh, to fully secure the building. 
and that represents quite a lot of expenditure, given that budgets are usually actually less than that for a term. And that's often seen as not particularly good value for members, just to let one person uh, air their views against someone else. I'm not sure it's great for them, but for everyone else, potentially actually quite dull. Secondly, um, there has been a history after inviting controversial speakers that uh, more moderate speakers are put off coming at all. So, for example, Owen Jones refused to come to the union uh, because a controversial speaker had been invited. I want to keep this expand on your if the choice is between having one of our world debating championships debate Nick Griffin and having Owen Jones come to give a talk, I think I know which event I'd like to watch any day. But more specifically to your question about it not representing value for money, I completely agree with you. That's why I want to change the system. We can't justify that cost if we're going to put them on a soapbox, let them give a half hour speech, members maybe throw them questions and they have an unlimited right of response. We don't get to challenge them, we don't get to put them on the spot, we don't get to grill them. That's what I want to do with these one-on-one -on -one debates. We take one of our finest debaters, one of our world champions, we pit them against these controversial speakers, we watch them really scrutinise their positions, explain all the logical fallacies, everything you've wanted to be said to Nick Griffin's face or Marie Le Pen's face. We watch them squirm, then we open it up to the audience to answer questions. And I think given that, I think that definitely represents value for money. Because then we're no longer just the Graham Norton show with panelling. You know, I'll work very hard to get the best speakers and line up absolute red, red carpet stars. But we have to do more than just inviting celebrities. We have to give students an opportunity to challenge some of the most controversial figures in the country who, like it or not, are shaping events in politics today. And we have one final question. Hi. Um, yeah, you've been planning for uh, getting involvement of um, the very best speakers in the house, like part of our members. What about um, the not very best speakers, those that are still learning? Do you, is that part of your agenda and how to get them involved aside from just a training workshop? Sorry, by not very best speakers, do you mean yeah, like those, those that are still learning and, and yes. not really being able to speak um, um, at the main event, but like we'll, uh, having events for them, like um, debates hold not really just on the main night, is that part of your agenda? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So I've been uh, teaching the debating workshops every week uh, this term. That's something that's absolutely going to go ahead. We're going to get debaters. People don't have to come every week, whether they have a lot of experience in debating or not. We'll take you in very small groups and work on how to build up your debating. But we have a problem that basically people learn how to do stuff. They don't have an opportunity to use it. They don't want to dedicate the whole weekend traveling all the way across the country, uh, all across the country by train to debate the point of the new the emergency debate. We give people an opportunity you, uh, to use their skills to practice okay, their public speaking in front right, of yeah. this chamber. We say we're going to debate about, I don't know, Scotland's future, whatever it is the members decide that they want to vote for on the Facebook poll that we do that week. And then you have a chance to use the experience that you've got from the debating workshops to address the challenges, yeah, yeah. to use those analytical skills, to try to persuade your friends, and ultimately yeah, can it, yeah. an energetic and dynamic yeah. debate. Does that answer your question? Thank you. Wonderful. Enjoy the debate. That's probably why you're here today. <laughs> Thank you very much for listening to Hustings. A few final announcements. How to vote, which is probably quite important given you've sat through all the Hustings. Um, please make sure you do vote if you want to. It's important that we hear who members want to see in office. Voting will be open from 9am tomorrow until 6pm. You'll be able to vote online at www.cus.org and if you have any problems, email rvo.cus.org. All this information will be sent out to you in an email tomorrow morning. We'll also, if you are having problems, you can also vote in person in the union in the office. Um, and also, if after all these things you thought, actually, you'd really like to get involved a bit more here, there are lots of ways for you to get involved beyond elected offices. Um, we've got appointed positions for next term and it'll be a fantastic way for you all to get involved. We've got roles such as Head of Press, Head of Publicity, Head of AB, Head of Event Management. Like, all sorts of fantastic yeah, roles. Yeah, 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 roles, yeah. yeah. roles. So, yeah. Just yeah. ask any of the officers you'd like to get involved. The appointed position for the deadline applications is midday tomorrow. So if you are interested, speak to any of the officers afterwards in the bar. Speak to the candidates in the bar afterwards. Just a reminder that no campaigning is allowed in the building. But if you do have questions for any of the candidates, you are welcome. You are able to work. <laughs> and, and I hope you enjoyed the things. Sorry it's taken so long. I hope you enjoyed the debate. Where is he?